So today we'll have a look at uh, the API gateway of Software AG Web Methods and we'll go through a quick introduction of uh, onboarding an API on an API gateway. Uh, so primarily the API gateway provides uh, threat protection capabilities. Uh, we will go into them in uh, subsequent videos. But for now, it's good to understand that API Gateway is usually um, the first line of defense in any organization. Um, in addition to that, the API Gateway also provides uh, mediation and virtualization capabilities. Uh, by that, what I mean is you can actually build your virtualized APIs on the API Gateway which acts as a mediation layer onto your downstream um, APIs. So the different uh, screenshots that you see are the different capabilities on the Software AG Web Methods API Gateway. Uh, however, uh, what is of interest in today's uh, demonstration is about how we onboard an API and uh, how the traffic actually flows from the internet or from a north-south fashion. So we have the inbound traffic entering in from the cloud or could be within your um, organization. This in turn reaches the API gateway where our virtual services are actually exposed. This is the place where our actual APIs are going to be onboarded. Now behind the virtual services is the actual native service for which we are actually going to build an API. So at any given time, uh, the traffic flows from north, south in the fashion such that the virtual APIs on the API gateway are invoked by the consumer and that in turn hands off the traffic to the native services. Okay, so today we're going to actually look at how to build an API on uh, the API Gateway. Um, basically, this is going to be the first uh, session on the Web Methods API Gateway. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually going to do each and every step uh, one at a time as a newbie. Therefore, I'll make as many mistakes as possible and we'll correct it uh, as we go. So to start off, I'm going to access the Web Methods uh, API Gateway Management Console. Uh, and I'm already logged in, so I'm just going to log out. And as you can see, it is right now running on port 9073, but it could be on any other port for that matter. Uh, if you have followed uh, my videos on how to set up the gateway on a Docker, uh, you, would, uh, you would be able to do this. Right now I'm using the 10.5, but uh, most of the things apply for 10.7 as well. So I'm going to actually log in as uh, the default user that comes with the product okay. and as I said I've made all the mistakes now if you navigate on the top bar you can see there are APIs there are policies applications packages uh, micro gateway we'll try and cover these in um, different videos but for today we're just going to keep it simple and quick so we'll start with actually uh, the API section. As you can see, there are a couple of APIs that I've already built um, for uh, my own personal learning. But here we are actually going to be building an API. And for that, I have um, opened up a few websites which actually give sample APIs. So API if any, uh, gives different uh, APIs for, uh, and these are all free APIs. If you want to test them out, you can use them. So I just picked up the cat facts uh, and uh, this is the URL to one of the, uh, so as you can see, it's it's a get request and every request returns back uh, 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 a data of an, a cat or some facts around the cat and it's randomly keeps on changing. So we'll be using this API for our testing purposes. Uh, to make it easy, you could as well use any other APIs. Uh, you can just quickly look at to, to jokes. Yeah, there's this one of jokes. Uh, but I think this would take you to. It's not working. So oh, I think we'll keep it 
to some simple API. So this gives you information. So uh, I think you get the point. So we'll stick to this. We we'll come out to the gateway. Now to start building APIs on the gateway, uh, the simplest uh, procedure is to either import the Swagger file of the Rust API that you have, or you could just start from scratch. Uh, for for the completeness of this session, I'll start off by creating an API from scratch. So let's say we create a Rust API. Uh, I'm going to give it a name, my API, uh, and just follow along. It needs a server URL. For this, we'll paste the actual endpoint that you're going to reach. Although this is not the endpoint that is actually going to make the call to, but we'll just use this uh, and, and, and you'll understand it as we go. Click on add, keep moving on. Uh, now we're supposed to add a resource. Uh, resource is nothing but a means for accessing uh, our API. So let's say I'm going to call it uh, my facts and uh, i'm going to give the path as my fax uh, it supports only the get method as the uh, native api also supports only get click on add keep going ahead uh, at this stage actually we can save the api now as you can see once the api is saved uh, it's not activated it's still in an inactive state in order to activate it you have to go and click on activate uh, once you click on activate, if you come on to the endpoint, you'll see that the API is now published on this endpoint. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to uh, Postman. Man, this is this is the URL of the native service that we were trying to consume. And as you see, uh, I'm Postman. If I just keep on hitting the get endpoint. It just responds back with uh, uh, the random facts of a cat. Now, the actual URL which I had copied from the gateway, if I just put that over here in the... So this is the name of the host from Docker. So I'm going to just change that to localhost. Um, and if you were to hit get, it wouldn't work because my gateway is running on triple five six, but the default installation runs on uh, Tetra five. So if I were to hit it now, uh, let's wait and see. It says that uh, it can't find the API. What's why is that the case? Uh, copy the gateway API once more back change it once more it says connection refused I can see yeah of course it'll say connection refused because it's still five I'm going to make it six yeah, okay. So as you can see, my service is running on triple five six, and I call the API. And uh, as you can see, it clearly says resource not found. Now, why does it say resource not found? Because what we just copied is the base endpoint of the API. If you recollect, we had actually put in a, a resource name called my facts. Now, if you were to hit it, it still says 404. Now, why is that the case? As you can see, uh, we have mentioned that we want to access this resource, my facts, and the native service actually goes to fact. Now, let's switch back on to our look at what's going wrong. So, this is the execution cycle. An API enters over here and it goes through the different phases of the request processing. There is an identification phase, there's request processing, traffic monitoring, and finally it reaches the routing endpoint. Now here, this is the endpoint that we're trying to reach. But as you can see, there is a, an extra parameter which says sysresource path. So resource path, what does it do? Whatever is passed in as your resource name is automatically handed off to the backend. 
there are cases where you would want this to be the behavior but uh, for the simplest simple api what we're going to just do is remove off the cisco source path from here and just leave it as fact so we're going to say just access this as is let's save it once more let's try to access it this time as you can see this time the service has actually worked because it doesn't send the my facts to the backend service it just uses the uh, endpoint as is now if you wanted to pass it on to the backend uh, you could still do that uh, by actually handing off the sys resource path so let's give that a try uh, we are accessing our api again uh, this time we go to the policies we go directly into routing click on it you can click on the edit to modify the api now here uh, instead of using the fact we're actually going to remove the fact from there and say that whatever is sent from the api uh, on the gateway is handed off to the backend system now it's always better that if you type in it over here and then click on the drop down rather than just saving it from here occasionally it doesn't work when you just type it over there now we save it now there is still something wrong about this api uh, but uh, let's try to figure it out so our expectation is that once i access this api it would work but uh, let's give it a try yeah, as you can see it's saying 404 uh, which means the native api didn't find the resource we're trying to access why is that the case as you can see uh, i'm passing my fax as the resource uh, and my fax is sent to the downstream system now this won't work because as you recollect the downstream system is expecting fact and not my fax so there are various ways to uh, fix this but for now uh, to be the word fact okay so let's just go to resources i'm going to edit this to fact just call the resource name fact so fact okay i'll just fact okay now i save it okay let's switch back to the facts it wouldn't work it can't find the, the resource called my facts we change it to fact and you can see yeah, it was handed off to the downstream system now this is a very simple introduction to how uh, to build an api on the gateway you could uh, introduce different different policies for identification for request processing request uh, throttling uh, traffic management there, there are a lot more that you can do we'll try and go through each of these phases in uh, some of the next videos this was a, a simple introduction to put an api on the gateway and uh, this api is now fully functional and you can hand off this endpoint to your uh, consumers to start using them uh, thank you for watching the video uh, hope you liked it if you have any questions please uh, put them in the uh, comment box thank you